So this bearing wasn't any good anyway. So I wasn't too worried about damaging it. Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So I've had a lot of people asking me how the Alice Chalmers D17 tractor is coming along. And the truth of the matter is I've kind of been stuck. Um, actually this brake drum has been stuck. So I've been having a hard time getting this final drive assembly completely taken apart. So I have to take the brake drum off of the axle so I can pull it out because the axle pulls out this direction because there's actually a gear down here on this end and this is the big end of the axle and it only pulls out this far side. So this brake drum is press fit onto the axle so it's a pretty tight fit anyway and then it's probably been on here for years and years. So first thing I tried was just a normal three jaw puller see if it'd come off, of course it wouldn't. So I decided that I was gonna have to heat this up to try to break it free. So I decided I'd just go ahead and get a full size oxygen acetylene set up. So I went ahead and I leased an oxygen bottle and an acetylene bottle. I bought this cart at Harbor Freight to put them in. And then while I was getting these bottles, I went ahead and I got a bottle of shielding gas for my welder. So I can just switch over from flux core and switch over to solid wire. So as you saw in the footage at the beginning of the video, I was able to get this glowing red using the oxygen acetylene torch and I still couldn't get it to pull off of there. So now what I've done is I actually made new links to go in the three jaw puller that are a couple inches longer. And that's just gonna change this pull angle a little bit. And then I ordered a whole new three jaw puller that I think was gonna pull this off of here. And it showed up in the mail the other day. And I decided, well, let me go ahead and try this three jaw puller one more time. And now that everything has cooled down, it's not hot no more. It looks like this is going to pull right off of there. It's probably pulled off three quarters of an inch right now. There it is. Holy cow. That's probably one of the hardest things I've had to try to <laughs> break free. All right. We got it off of there. So we got a Woodruff key here and a retaining ring. They both have to come off for it to go through the seal on the other side. So another thing I bought was actually some more chisels and punches. All right, there's our Woodruff key. All right, oops. I may never get this back on, but I think I'm going to get it off of there. So the impact gun actually won't fit under here to break these bolts free. So I think that's going to move on to the next new tool that I got. In fact, this just showed up today. So I ended up buying a three quarter inch impact socket set 
that comes with a ratchet, breakover bar, everything I need. So I wasn't sure how often I would use three quarter inch impacts. So I went and got the cheapest set that I could find pretty much. So this goes all the way up to two inches and then goes all the way down to three quarters of an inch. And it comes with a ratchet, three quarter inch ratchet with it. And then it got two extensions and it's got a three quarter inch sliding breakover bar. Now this is beefy enough. I definitely wouldn't be afraid to put a cheater bar on here, make it an extra two, three feet and really get after it with this thing. So I'm gonna use this to see if we can break these bolts free. So I think I just need a 15 16 and we'll try this breakover bar. I'll tell you what, this barely fits in there. Probably gonna flip this whole thing over. I think I'm gonna have to strap this to the table. You guys thought I was kidding. Oh, there we go. Heck, I didn't even need a cheater bar. That's really a pretty tight fit in there. I have to have the breaker bar slid all the way out. Like I said, I got several new punches. I just got two studs in here that's helping keep everything aligned. And now I see if I can get this apart here. I need to use my left hand, but I, it's like awkward as can be. Learning how to be ambidextrous. It's coming apart. Hey, it's big enough I can get my chisel in there now. Oh, look at that. I think she's apart. So I can lay this down. All right. Uh -huh. One step closer. Yep, look at that. Still some mouse nest, bird nest inside of there. So from the parts diagram, it looks like this should drive out this direction. We got a, a bearing taper bearing here in the end. And I think if I hit on this shaft, it should pop that out. I think it moved. I think, try again. Just using a dead blow hammer. Well, I've got her strapped to the table again and <laughs> I've got my eight pound sledge. See if we can get this out. It's moving. We got about an eighth inch of play in it so far, so it's moving. It's like we're at about three eighths of an inch. We're almost there. There she went. Yep, there she is. <laughs> there, finally got the axle out of there. Man, that thing was killing me. Not the softest landing in the world. So before I tear into the second axle, I've got another tool that we just got a few weeks ago that's gonna also help with working on the tractor. So you already know we got the blast cabinet, but I ended up picking up a parts washer now. So this will help with cleaning up any of the greasy parts. Now I bought this off of Summit Racing. It's one of the cheapest parts washers I could find and get delivered for free. So I hate to spend too much money on something that you're not sure you're actually gonna use a lot or every day. So I think this is gonna work for me. 
You know, I've got uh, got some seals in here. I'm trying to read the part numbers off of them, cleaning up some of the old bearings, trying to read the part numbers off of those. And then what else we got in here? Like this. This is one of the final drive bull gears. I've got that in here, getting all the oil off of it. And uh, then I've got a pan. I've got a pan in here as well with some of the smaller parts getting cleaned. So I'm just using, it's called Purple Power. It's, this is a water-based solvent. It's basically some kind of water-based degreaser. And that's what this is meant to use. You can't use solvents in here. It's not rated for flammable material, but works really good for soaking the parts. And then all I gotta do is basically rinse them off with water and dry them off when they're done. And the last tool I got, this is the hydraulic puller. It's, a, it's basically got a hydraulic jack on here and it's a three jaw puller. This is a 15 ton hydraulic puller. And I, this is another one of those cheap tools, about the cheapest I could find and have delivered. And I got that for trying to pull off this brake drum. So before I heat this one up, I may go ahead and give this a shot, see if it'll pull it off. This looks like a good way to smash my finger. There we go. Honestly, I didn't think this thing was gonna be as big as it was. I may not even get it to fit in this. I thought the, the reach wasn't gonna be long enough. So I ended up buying this 15 ton one because I thought it was the only one that would reach and it looks like it's plenty big enough. I may have to take these jaws off to get them in there. All right, I've got all three jaws now inside of the brake drum. So now I'm gonna screw this in there until the point goes in the end of the axle there. All right, there we're there. I'm gonna go ahead and start pumping this up. We'll see what happens. Now this drum is cracked. It may just end up breaking. Let me get my glasses. Where's my glasses? This is supposed to be 15 tons. I half expect this to break. Oh, it went. It moved a quarter of an inch or so. Oh my, I think I'm gonna get it off without having to heat this up. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure how much stroke this thing actually has. We may have to loosen this up and get another bite at it. Well, it looks like I'm at the end of the stroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the pressure on the jack. There we go. And then basically I'm gonna screw this back in again. I'm really close to it coming off. All right, tighten my valve back down. Go ahead and start cranking on it again. She's about to come all the way off. That is amazing. It's a lot better than having to heat that up. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm definitely happy with that. That is cool. Well, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use this puller for again. Maybe it'll come in handy again, but it definitely works. So this is the brake drum that is cracked. You can see the crack there. And then as we look at this side, the crack goes up and then there's a crack that forms again on this side and there's a crack. So it's, it's not quite cracked all the way through. It's kind of weird. It like stops right here in the middle where the hub is. But um, that's a brake drum I plan on definitely replacing. Well, I won't make you guys suffer through me tearing down that other axle. I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to get that one apart. So, that's pretty much the update on the Alice Chalmers. I have been stuck trying to get those brake drums and those axles apart. And luckily we've, we've bought some more tools. I told you I needed bigger tools for tearing something like this apart. So we've got a few newer tools, a few bigger tools and uh, definitely, definitely has helped. I was really impressed actually with that hydraulic puller. Um, I, I thought for sure we'd probably break the drum or it just wouldn't be able to pull it off of there. I'd have to get the torch out. And it, it did it. So I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I can't remember what that ended up cost me. I think it was just under $100.
and hopefully I'll find another reason to use it later. I'm sure through the years I'll find something else that'll come in handy on. But uh, I'll try to leave links to a lot of the cheap stuff that I bought down below. I don't think there's anything that I showed you guys that was really expensive. Now the, the bottles were, the bottles were a little more expensive. I ended up getting oxygen, acetylene, and shielding gas. Now I had to lease all three of those bottles. So there was a price to lease it for a year and then I had to pay for the fill up. And that ended up costing me, I think just under $400 for those bottles, for all three bottles. Now, if I would have known that at the beginning, I think I told that up to, I think the most expensive one was actually the shielding gas for the, for the welder. Now, I think I could have got the oxygen acetylene. I think I could have got both of those bottles, I think for around 250, I think somewhere in there. If I would have known that to beginning, at the beginning, I probably would have just went that route because I think I got $500 in that small torch set and I could have got the oxygen acetylene and bought like a $300 torch set with regulators and I wouldn't have been maybe 600 bucks into it, you know, and like an extra $100 instead of having the small bottles, I would have had a big set. And I think I should have just went that route to begin with. And I, I think I was just too afraid and didn't know how much ex how expensive it was going to be. And I think that includes the, the maybe a little bit more than that because I did have to buy the cart that the that the bottles went on. So um, but I think in the end, hindsight's 2020, I, I would have probably gone with the the bottles, the big bottles to begin with, especially knowing everything I know now and how often I was going to use it. And man, it is definitely summertime. The gnats and the bugs have been bad. I think I've swallowed a bug every day for like the last four days. It's definitely warmed up this week. But that's where I am on the tractor. I know I had some guys asking about it and it's just because I was kind of, I was stuck, couldn't get it apart. When you heat it up with a torch and you got it glowing cherry red, and you, you're well, maybe not cherry red, but I had it glowing red and it wouldn't come apart. You're kind of like back to the drawing board. So then it was like researching whether to buy a hydraulic press, and I didn't think I'd get that axle in a hydraulic press. I didn't think it, any of them were wide enough to hold that axle housing in there. And then I ended up coming across those three jaw pullers that have a hydraulic jack on them. And uh, so I ended up going that route. It's kind of the cheap route, but it worked. So definitely impressed with that, as cheap as it was. I looked at some of the high-end ones, like some of the like name brand ones were like Man, I'd hate to say 20, 30 times as expensive, way expensive. Um, so I got that one, I think, for under 100, and name brand ones were like 2,000. I mean, that's a ridiculous difference in price. So went the cheap route, for sure. <laughs> but anyway, I think I'll be able to keep tearing this down. Um, I'm sure there'll be more tools coming. I'm sure I'll need something else before this is over. But I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, she's going. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, look at that. This is supposed to be 15 tons. I half expect this to break. Oh, it went.